it's Monday, August the 31st of the year of the Lord, 2020. Today is the last day of, of August. So this is a day to give thanks to the Lord for all the benefits we have received for His graces, for His love, for His mercy. It's already five months, fully five months and more that we have been with this COVID, April, May, June, July, and August. Let us thank the Lord. And let us also ask forgiveness to God for all the sinful things that we have done during this month of August. Tomorrow we begin the new month of September, the September. So let us live in the presence of the Lord. And today is taken from Luke chapter 4, verse 16 to 30. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue. And on the Sabbath, he stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Is this not the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself, and say, Do here in your native place the things that we have heard were done in Capernaum and then he said Amen I say to you no prophet is accepted in his own native place indeed I tell you there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah when the sky was closed for three and a half years and severe famine spread over the entire land it was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow of Sarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elijah, the prophet. Yet, not, not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman, the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, dropped him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built, to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, today we begin reading the Gospel of Luke until the end of the liturgical year in November. And it could be good, interesting, if you could read in one week the whole gospel, the 24 chapters, so you can have an idea. You know, we have one gospel, which is Jesus Christ, and the gospel is given to us in four different authors, different gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and each one has different perspective, depends on who wrote it and to whom, what was his purpose. Up to last Saturday, we read from the gospel of Matthew, now we are in the gospel of Luke. There are a few things that we keep in mind. First, the Gospel of Luke, it speaks a lot about the, the Holy Spirit. It's Jesus being led by the Spirit to the, to the desert. It's the Holy Spirit leading Jesus in his ministry. The second thing, it is a lot the Gospel of the poor, the people who live in the outskirts, the people who counted for nothing, the women, the sinners. You just think about chapter 15. It's only in the Gospel of Luke. 
Also, it is the, the, the gospel of people eating, eating with everybody, because eating was fellowship at the end. And that gospel was written by Luke for the pagans, those who were not Jewish. And Luke wrote two, two volumes. The first is the gospel, and the second, the Acts of the Apostles. The, 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 the scholars say that the first is about Jesus, and the second, the Acts of the Apostles, is about the Holy Spirit. And then today we begin in chapter 4. We, 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 we do not read the first three chapters. You can read. The first are the, is the infancy narratives of Jesus. Chapter 1 and chapter 2. Then chapter 3 is about Jesus going into the desert and then the preaching of John the Baptist. Now, as Jesus went to the synagogue, as it was his custom, just think, if Jesus went to the synagogue every Saturday, he was a son of God and he needed to go to the synagogue, just imagine us. We should be, we should, we must, we ought to go to Mass every single Sunday. And then Jesus went to the synagogue as a good Jew. And what do they do? They read the scriptures. So Jesus, in that, in Nazareth, in his, in his hometown, in his village, where his family lived, he presented his program. And that program is taken from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to, to preach the good tidings to the poor. It's a different perspective. It's not about power, about money, about prestige. It's about poverty. It's about the last and the least. And the funny thing is, everybody was happy. They were amazed that Jesus spoke with such power, with such authority. But Jesus, remember, Jesus comes to bring together the whole family, the human family. And that was a problem in Nazareth. He was rejected in his own native place. The people could not see in Jesus somebody else, just the man Jesus, the son of Joseph, the son of Mary. They knew him. And this is why Jesus speaks two things, two stories that they knew quite well. The story of, El of Elijah oh, and the story of Elisha at the end. And their stories, so these two great prophets in the Old Testament, you can read it in the, in the first book of Kings and the second book of Kings. Elijah who cures at the end this widow, a foreigner. And then Elisha who cures this leper who was a foreigner. And this goes against our ideas, who is foreign, who is native at the end. It is communion. It's the last and the least who are welcome. Whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers and sisters at the end. Then, the irony of this, they were amazed at the beginning. And when Jesus speaks about welcoming the, the ones who did not belong, they became filled with fury and wanted to kill Jesus. Just think. The free speech of Jesus was not a success. People wanted to kill him because they could not welcome the message of Jesus. How difficult and complicated it is to accept the message of Jesus in our life. Just read. I invite you to read and to listen again the gospel and to see how difficult it is to accept Jesus in our lives. But let us ask the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, so that we can accept Jesus, his message, which is a message of communion, of fraternity, of unity, of forgiveness, of peace, of joy in the Spirit. It's Monday, so we invite you to go to Mass. We have Mass at 8 o'clock, preceded by morning prayers at 7.30. Then at noon, we have the Holy Rosary, and 6.30, within prayers. And please, if this video is helpful to you, share it with your acquaintances. We have a blessed day. And don't forget, read the Gospel of Luke from chapter 1 to chapter 24. Take it. 15 minutes every day this weekend, you will make it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Please. Have a blessed day.